Hey you. How you doing? I'm Wimsory and today we're gonna to be watching No Country for Old Men. Why? Because I like that title. Um, also it is number 148 on the list that I sometimes go by, which is IMDb's top 250 greatest movies of all time. Yeah, sometimes I'll buy a book just because I like the cover. I'll buy an album just because I liked the cover. I'll watch a movie just because I like the title. So anyway, thank you for being here. I'm excited. Let's watch the movie. Oh, um, Cohen Brothers. That's neat. They do um, Fargo, which is one of my favorite movies, don't you know? No jump scares. Is it that type of movie? I was sheriff of this county when I was 25 years old. Grandfather was a lawman. Father, too. Some of the old-time sheriffs never read more a gun. There's this boy I sent to the electric chair at Huntsville here a while back. He said if they turned him out, he'd do it again. But he knew he was going to hell. Be there in about 15 minutes. I don't know what to make of that. I surely don't. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. I don't understand. Sheriff, he had some sort of thing on him, oxygen tank for emphysema or something. Well, you can look at it when you get in. I got it under control. Oh, oh, oh no. Goodness, just keep going. Okay, okay then. He he did that. It really is in the middle of nowhere. That's where I live. <laughs> He's got the oxygen tank. What's this about? Step out of that car, please. What is that? I need you to step out of that car, sir. What is that for? You. Hold still, please, sir. Why? <laughs> it was just... This guy sucks. That guy in the car was... He was nice, though. So I'm sure he would have given you his car or whatever. Wow. Okay. Shit. Yeah, I don't think you killed it. Mm. Oh, yeah. You're not by yourself. <laughs> I was gonna say that's kind of dangerous. Oh, there's other people. Okay. Hopefully not that guy. Oh. This is so scary. I wouldn't go out there. I just don't think. This is horrible. Oh my goodness. What happened here? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Agua for real. He needs water. But you ain't got no agua. Ultima hombre, last man standing. There must have been one. Where'd he go? Yeah, right? Cierra la puerta. Yeah. I love. Wow, maybe he is the last man standing. You stopped to watch your backtrack. You stopped in shade. Really brave. Ah, he's right. That is. How much could you fit in there? <laughs> he just takes it. This guy is questionable. I mean, would you if you came across that scene? Curious about this guy. What's in the satchel? It's a bowl of money. That would be the day. <laughs> Where'd you get the pistol? Get in place. <laughs> I don't even want to know where you've been all day. I don't think you do, man. All right. All right. <laughs> what are you doing, baby? I'm going out. Going where? I'm fixing to do something dumber than hell, but I'm going in. When I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Your mother's dead, Llewellyn. Well, then I'll tell her myself. Oh, he's going back. He's going back with water. Okay. That's very dangerous. I don't know. How could you leave someone like that? Hell no. Mm. Oh. Oh. Oh, hell no. So scary. There's nowhere to run either. Like, there's nowhere to hide. 
Oh my god, dogs too! Oh my! That dog is a beast! Yeah, you're screwed, man. I seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo? <laughs> it mean nothing by it. <laughs> this guy's a jerk. Is there something wrong with anything? There's something wrong with you. Will there be anything else? You already asked me that. What time do you close? Now, generally around dark, at dark. What time do you go to bed? Or somewhere around 9.30. I could come back then. You live in that house all back. This is my wife's father's originally. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Call it. I don't like this. I can't call it for you. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. All right. Heads in. Well done. <sighs> don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky quarter. Or it'll get mixed in with the others and become just a coin, which it is. <sighs> Gosh, what an intense, horrible person. What am I supposed to tell Mama? Come on, pack your things. Anything you leave, you ain't gonna see again. Got a Scroogey? Scroogey. That's a dead dog. Yes, it is. <laughs> Getting anything on this? Not a bleep. Give me that. Oh, he just kills everybody. Start paying a rental on my horse. I love you more and more every day. Oh, be careful. Always am. Don't hurt no one. <laughs> Stop me, Ray Jones. Oh, this voice in the beginning of that. It sounded so familiar. All right, so we got we got some good guys coming. Thank God. Wouldn't think a car'd burn like that. We should have brought weenies. <laughs> I know this truck. Belongs to a fella named Moss. Llewellyn Moss. That's the boy. You figure him for a dope runner? I kindly doubt it. Kindly doubt it. Oh. Well, this is just a deal gone wrong. It's that Mexican brown dope. Well, it's a mess, ain't it, Sheriff? If it ain't, it'll do till the mess gets here. I like the way he talks. Oh no, it's this guy, isn't it? Oh no. What is that? Who's it? Oh, I hate him! He's so scary! He's trying to open someone else's mail. Yours. Oh, he freaks me out. Oh no. I'm looking for Llewellyn Moss. Where does he work? I can't say. Where does he work? Did you not hear me? We can't give out no information. I just don't know what he's gonna do ever. Well, the way to Del Rio. Look, I'll call you in a couple days. I got a bad feeling, Llewellyn. Me too. I got a good one, so that ought to even out. <laughs> Mama's gonna raise hay. Mm -hmm. I work at Walmart. Not anymore, Carla G. You are retired. You are coming back, ain't you? I shall return. Sheriff's Department! My goodness. You going in? Gun out and up. Where am I charged? I'm hiding behind you. <laughs> so when was he here, Sheriff? Oh, now that's aggravating. Sheriff? We just missed him! Oh my gosh. You too. <laughs> oh, Sam, that's aggravating. <laughs> you think this boy Moss got any notion of the sorts of sons of bitches that are hunting him? Hmm. That's a good idea. That's a good spot. Now he's, you're just gonna be paranoid always, forever, wherever you go. At best. Oh gosh. There's no well in there. Now why would I expect him? Who is this? Oh my goodness. I feel like that was more of a yes, I know who that is type of thing. The way she answered it. She sounded like she knows who that is. That sucks. Just ride me up past those rooms. Low room. I want to see if someone's here. I don't, I don't want to get into some kind of a jackpot here, buddy. 
Take me to another motel. You're already in a jackpot. I'm trying to get you out of it. Take me to another motel. <sighs> You're already in a jackpot. I can guess what that means. Okay, he's just straight up evil. Lab reports from Austin on that boy by the highway. There wasn't no bullet. You shot this boy in the head and then went digging around in there with a pocket knife? Sir, I don't want to picture that. <laughs> I don't either. Rangers in the DEA are headed back out to the scene this morning. You gonna join him? Any new bodies accumulate out there? No, sir. <laughs> well, then I guess I can skip it. 12 gauge. You need shells? Yeah, double off. Never mind, I want a tent. Well, what kind of tent? The kind with most poles. <laughs> That is a strange request. Uh, could I get another room? Another additional? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a map of the rooms? Well, yeah, we had a sorted one. Number 137, it ain't two. No. It's got two double beds. <laughs> I feel like I meet her at least once a month. type of um, tracker. I don't know, I missed that, I guess. Got him. Oh my gosh, this is making me nervous. really smart. Very resourceful. He freaks me out. Smart. Why is it worse that he's not wearing shoes? It's just so much worse. No. Come on, come on. Get it. Get out of there somehow. Somehow. <laughs> Senseless. Don't look up. Don't see it. <gasps> yes. <laughs> he got out of there. Okay. Cool. <laughs> you know Anton Chigurh by sight, sir. I know him every which way. Did I ask you to sit? No, sir, but you struck me as a man who wouldn't want to waste a chair. I saw him November the 28th. This account, $1,200 in any 24-hour period. Just how well do you know Shigur? Psychopathic killer, but so what? Plenty of them around. Could you validate my parking ticket? An attempted humor? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Counted the floors of this building from the street. And? There's one missing. We'll look into it. One room. Mm. Serious for you. I ain't asking you to do anything illegal. There's someone who's been looking for me. Not police. Just call me if anyone else checks in tonight. It'd be kind of scary to hear. Yeah, good luck sleeping. I don't know how you would. There just ain't no way. Ain't no way. Oh yeah, there ain't no way that he found him. Ah, oh, that's so smart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sign either. That guy was so nice. He has no value of human life. He probably just shot him at the desk. This is so scary. I'm really glad you have that. Oh, I hear it. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's right there. Go, 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 go,
is insane. Oh, oh, it is dead. Must be like three in the morning when no one is up. Just Don't worry, I ain't gonna hurt you. I need you to drive me on out of here. <laughs> Don't make it very far now, did you? He's now some people have got to hear this by now, right? Oh my goodness, that is terrifying. Oh. Dang it! Yeah, 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 yeah. Accident. 500 bucks for that coat. Were you in a car accident? <sighs> that beer, too. How much? Ryan, give him the beer. <laughs> He's covered in blood. You better give it to him. At this point, it wouldn't even be worth it. <sighs> no. attention. Oh, okay. It's daylight. It's still alive and well, it looks like. What are you doing now, you weirdo? What are you doing with that? I can't believe this guy. Ugh. If you were anyone else, I'd feel so bad for you. But you are just the worst. He has not shown a single good thing about him. Straight up evil. Oh, jeez. Oh, man, jeez. No. <laughs> no. I don't want to see that. I'm not feeling brave enough for this. Oh my goodness. Any word on those vehicles yet? Oh good. The owner of that Bronco's been dead 20 years. That DEA agent called again. He's going back out there. Wanted to know if he wanted to go with him. I get you to call Loretta for me, tell her I'm going to see Carla G. Moss. You want me to wait till you quit the building? Uh-huh. You don't want to lie without what it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> you looked at your load lately? Oh, that is a damn outrage. How many bodies did you leave with? I ain't lost none of them, Sheriff. We didn't have no van four-wheel drive. <laughs> You get your ass out of here. <laughs> Brain of That's horrible. Oh, no. Is this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass? His name's Shiger. Sugar. Sugar. Anton Sugar. It's called a transponder. I know what it's called. Took me about three hours. Yeah, well, I've been mobile. You don't understand. What do you do? I'm retired. What did you do? Welder. Settling, MIG, TIG. If it can be welded, I can weld it. Cast iron? Yeah. I don't mean braze. I didn't say braze. Pop metal. What did I say? <laughs> Yeah, it's a name. Mm. So was that. So what does that make me, your buddy? <laughs> Look, you gotta give me this money. I spent it. <laughs> Got a million and a half on whores and whiskey and the rest of it just sort of blew it. It <laughs> would take so long to do. Why would he go to Odessa? Kill your wife. Oh, right. That is something he would do. Maybe he's the one who needs to be worried. Call me when you've had enough. I can even let you keep a little of the money. He'd still kill you just for inconveniencing him. Mm-hmm. He's not like you. He's not even like me. Well, he don't talk as much as you. I give him points for that. <laughs> You hadn't heard from him? No, I ain't. These people will kill him, Carla Jean. They won't quit. He won't neither. He never has. 
Just tell him I can make him safe. This Laura Steer is a lot different these days. Use an air gun. Why are you telling me that, Sheriff? I don't know. <laughs> oh. No way. No, no, no. There's no way. How did he... How did he do that? How could you be that good at, like, getting in someone else's head, you know? Retracing their steps. How? Oh, no. No. Um, hey. Hello? Oh. Hello, Carson. Let's go to your room. I'm a day trader. I could just go home. Take you to an ATM, 14 grand in it. I know where the satchel is. If you knew you would have it with you. And why didn't he get it? I know what it's going to be. It will be brought to me and placed under my feet. And you know what's gonna happen now. You should admit your situation. There will be more dignity in it. If the rule you followed, brought you to this, of what use was the rule? Do you have any idea how crazy you are? <laughs> you mean the nature of this conversation? I mean the nature of you. <laughs> I hate him. Hello? Yes. Is uh, Carson Wells there? Not in the sense that you mean. <laughs> you need to come see me. Who is this? You know who it is. <laughs> Do you know where I'm going? You know she won't be there. It doesn't make any difference where she is. Bring me the money and I'll let her go. That's the best deal. I won't tell you you can save yourself because you can't. I decided to make you a special project. You ain't gonna have to come look for me at all. Who do you think it's through this gate in the United States of America? American citizens? Some American citizens. If I get sensible answers, then they get to go to America. And if I don't get sensible <laughs> answers, they don't. And I ask you again, how you come to be out here with no clothes? Well, I got an overcoat on. Are you jacking with me? Oh, no, sir. Don't jack with me. <laughs> you in the service? Uh, no, sir. I'm a veteran. Ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Two tours. Well, sir, get someone to help this man. He needs to get into town. <laughs> oh. How those Larry's holding up? Good. Oh, good. You know, uh, people come in here without any clothes on? No, sir. It's unusual. <laughs> I had the sheriff here from Terrell County. What'd you tell him? You're hurt, ain't you? <laughs> what makes you say that? I can hear it in your voice. Oh. I'm gonna give you the money. I'm gonna put you on the plane. I ain't gonna leave you in the lurch. And after I find him, I'll come and join you. What am I supposed to do with Mother? <laughs> Nobody's gonna bother her. I got the cancer. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, he's back. You going to shoot me? Do you see me? I always seen this is what it come to. I previsioned it. Three years ago, I said no and good. You know how many people I know in El Paso, Texas? That's how many. You need help with the bugs, madam. It's not often you see a Mexican in a suit. Where are you staying? Oh. <sighs> Was that a true story? Couldn't swear to ever detail, but it's certainly true it is a story. <laughs> if I tell you where Llewellyn's head is, you promise it'll be just you who goes and talks with him? Yes, ma'am, I do. Llewellyn would never ask for help. He never thinks he needs any. Carla Jean, I will not mm -hmm. harm you, ma'am. You should have gotten help a while ago. What's the problem there, neighbor? Oh. Where are you going? I don't know. Just lighting up for the territories, huh? Can you get those chicken grates out of the bed? I'm glad we didn't have to see. <laughs> beer! That's what's coming. <laughs> Ma'am, I, I know what beer leads to. <laughs> beer leads to more beer. Yeah, if you do it right. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh. oh, I can guess what happened here. After all that, was he dead? After all that, just a trail of bodies. Be the worst. It just almost seems like he's gonna keep on going. Oh, hell no! Ha. He went back for it. Oh my. By yourself. Oh. <laughs> It was right there. 
This is just crazy. How many of them things you got now? Cats? Oh, I don't know, several. <laughs> You're looking older. I am older. All the time you spend trying to get back what's been took from you, more is going out the door. Well, you just have to try to get a tourniquet on it. Loretta tells me you're quitting. How come you're doing that? I always figured when I got older, God would sort of come into my life somehow. This country's hard on people. Mom, I knew this one and done with. I ain't got the money. You got no cause to hurt me. He doesn't need one. He doesn't need one. But I gave my word. Your husband had the opportunity to save you. Instead, he used you to try to save himself. Call it. I know she was crazy when I saw you sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Call it. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. I got here the same way the coin did. Just keep going. Don't talk to him, don't look at him. He kills people for no reason. You got a bone sticking out of your arm. <laughs> all right, let me just sit here. Are you all right? You got a bone sticking out your arm. <laughs> I'll give you my shirt. Oh, he's just trying to keep going. I'm the same. You didn't see me. I was already gone. No part of that's mine, Franklin. You still got your damn shirt. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? <sighs> Had dreams. Anything interesting? They always is to the party concerned. <laughs> Both had my father in them. I'm older now than he ever was by 20 years. He's the younger man. It was like we was both back in the older times. And I was a horse by snow on the ground. He rode past me and kept on going. Had his blanket wrapped around him and his head down. When he rode past, I seen he was carrying fire. And in the dream, I knew that he was going on ahead. He was fixing to make a fire somewhere out there in all that dark. And I knew that whenever I got there, he'd be there. And then I woke up. <laughs> oh my, oh my goodness. That was an amazing movie. Um, I'm just gonna say it right now, that was an awesome movie. Um, okay, well, um, if you're new to my channel, usually what I'll do is I'll rewatch the movie a few times, um, I'll edit it, and then I'll read some articles and watch some documentaries about it, and then I come back to you as my outro, so that's what I'm gonna do. Wow. Okay, so as usual, let's start with some awards. The award for best battle scene goes to... We can't give out no information. I knew the toilet flushing was probably why he left, but I like to think that maybe, just maybe, he finally came across someone he liked. She's just such a character, I feel like, oh gosh, I just want them to be friends. The award for highest blood to screen time ratio goes to... Hello, I'm Llewellyn. What's your name? No longer with us? Cool, cool, cool. I like your truck. Now that we know each other so well, I think I'm gonna borrow it. Okay, thanks. Tell Satan I'll be there in a minute. Ugh. The didn't deserve to die award goes to... Okay, yeah, I know, it's a messed up award, okay? But this movie has taken another sliver of what little innocence I had left, so... And yeah, I believe that basically everyone in this movie who died didn't deserve it, but... Who deserved it the least, in my opinion? Award goes to... Brother, I've been there. Well... I just wish I could go back and say, Stop! Don't do it! Sir, that is an alien! Keep driving! Award for best line goes to... You mean the nature of this conversation? I mean the nature of you. I just can't get over how funny this is. Okay, so the first scene when the deputy gets strangled... Um, it just completely caught me off guard. I was just listening to how nice his accent sounded, and then, bam, I was watching the life get drained from his face. Three minutes into the movie, exactly three minutes, and here's the screenshot we get. And three seconds later... Fine. Not fine. Okay. Not okay. During my rewatches, I kept rewinding this one part. I couldn't figure out what is so 
spooky about it. Um, it's it's after he strangles the deputy. I couldn't put my finger on it until I realized these two characters are having completely opposite experiences. It's the life getting drained from this guy that gives Sugar his own life back. The deputy has his final breath stolen from him just as Anton breathes a sigh of relief. Two completely opposite reactions. I can't really put it into words, but it's just that's so scary. Throughout the movie you can see how easily people fall into danger with Sugar simply because they're used to being safe. It seems almost like it amuses him a little bit. Um, for instance, the second guy we see him kill is politely asked to stand still, and that's what he does with the last five seconds of his life. And he just keeps on going in this manner throughout the entire time we're watching him. We'll come back to him. Anyway, there's Llewellyn. Um, we find out pretty early on that he is a man of few words, which in real life, that just means, you know, you're probably real interesting and smart, but on screen, it's way more complicated because then you have to find ways to show because because you can't tell. It's a very ambitious character to write. I do like the compromise of having him say a word here or there to himself um, in the way of just talking to himself. Um, it it kind of lets us know what he's thinking for once and sometimes just adds a little bit of humor to it. When he opens the briefcase to find two million dollars in it, all he has to say is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because it's true, only money could cause this mess of dead bodies spread out over hundreds of miles of desert. Only, you know, money or drugs. Same thing, really. Speaking of the desert, I know a lot of people hate the way it looks, you know, the endlessness, but even those people cannot deny the fact that it is a good looking freaking movie. Sir Roger Deakins was nominated for the 2001 Academy Award for Best Cinematography for this movie and won a BAFTA award for the same. The whole thing is done just so thoughtfully. There's one point where Llewellyn is standing on this bridge next to the, the border and I'm thinking to myself, I think I say it out loud, you know, it's, it's not even worth it at this point. But then I think, hold on, also, it wouldn't be worth it to give up. And he's standing on this bridge at this border in between literally two different countries, and I just wonder if he's thinking the same thing. Llewellyn is a Vietnam War veteran, and so is Carson Wells. Um, at one point, Llewellyn asks, well, what does that make me, your buddy? <laughs> Later, when Llewellyn is trying to get back into the United States, the agent at the border asks if he's in the service, and Moss responds, No, sir, I'm a veteran. The border agent, upon making sure this is true information, immediately decides to let him come through to America. And I'm pretty sure that was the type of mutual respect that Carson was expecting from Llewellyn, probably because the public didn't treat Vietnam War vets very well at all, and I guess maybe they got used to having to rely on each other in some way. Carla Jean, I feel really bad for her throughout the movie. But then again, she seems pretty unfazed and it makes me wonder, like, you knew what you were signing up for when you married him, didn't you? <laughs> At first I thought it was kind of weird that she didn't seem all that worried about him, but then I thought, you know, she's not not concerned because she doesn't love him or care about him. She's not freaking out because she believes in him so much. Without knowing many details at all, she has all the faith in the world that he's gonna come out the winner, no matter how many drug dealers or police officers or psychopaths, you know, the world throws at him. But when she finally tells the sheriff, she says, Llewellyn would never ask for help. He never thinks he needs any. And as like, positive of a trait as that is, it would really be exhausting you know, to care about someone like that. Someone who can't get help, whether it's stubbornness or confidence or plain old-fashioned stupidity, it doesn't matter in my opinion, that's what killed him. And remember this scene? I really like this exchange. It's such a small thing, but it shows how well they get each other. And this is a rare moment we get to see Llewellyn smile. He's so gruff all the time, but he misses her and we're able to see this side very briefly. It reminds me of the feeling of being somewhere terrible and unfamiliar and then seeing someone when you know and the feeling that rushes to you when that happens. It seems like he feels this feeling when he hears her voice, but he sort of looks away after. He looks down, kind of the smile just leaves his face, and I think it says a lot about him. He starts to smile, but he shakes it away, and it kind of makes you wonder like what else he has had to stifle to get to where he's gotten in his life, what he's had to 
shoved down. That's what makes him such an interesting character. And I'm really upset that we don't get to see his final scene. He's just... <laughs> I'll get to it later. Then there's Mr. Bird Shooter. One thing I did want to mention is how hilarious Javier Bardem is. The way he delivers his lines is just so hilarious and you know whether it's on purpose or not he's just I'm pretty sure it is on purpose. Oh, he's just so funny and super entertaining to watch. That being said what a terrifying haircut. I mean person. Let's be honest the hair is the worst part. It's just, it's so unnecessary. He is not a bad looking person in the slightest. He's very good looking, but that hair, that hair is disturbing. It haunts my nightmares. Anton Sugar does not live in this world, but he needs medical attention. So he causes an actual explosion. And you can see as he hobbles off the screen, it has probably been this way for him for a long time. People can be at their most human when they're hurt, but he can't even get injured correctly. He does it all wrong. Something's off. And I'm not saying he can't feel the pain or something. I know he does. I mean, this is a freaking gunshot. It's just, it's just, he's only concerned with surviving. And then I wonder to myself, why would he even want that? And then I wonder to myself, well, that's the first time I wondered that about a person. <laughs> Everyone's got something they want to live for, but what's, what's he got? Money? It's not enough. Not all the money. All the money in the world still wouldn't be enough. to want to keep going on as this guy. Something is very off. Something is off. He's like, he's like a freaking alien. I don't understand him. I, you know, all this, all these conversations with people, it's so, so strange. It's so upsetting. It's just so wrong. The way he stands there, it's like he learned how to be a person and he's failing miserably. And you're watching it and you're just like, what is happening? Well, I know what's happening. I understand the words. Just something doesn't, something, he's just, he's a, it, it's a great performance. It's so, it's insane. In the scene right after this, there's a shot of Shigeru sitting on the toilet, naked and bloody in this grungy ass motel room, all alone. And my heart automatically wants to go out to him, but he doesn't have one, so it can't. I know it's fiction, but watching that again, it's just such a heavy scene because it's such an unsettling sensation to feel your empathy getting stomped out by your brain. No, don't feel bad for him. Don't waste that feeling. You know that feeling. Well, he doesn't know that feeling, and it's what makes him so strikingly frightening. Strikingly frightening. The one and only time, in my opinion, that we ever see even the slightest, almost, vulnerability in this character is when he crashes his car. Rather, someone crashes into him. He's he's following all these imaginary rules that he, he does for himself, but he's also as far as I could see, he's following the rules of the road, you know, he's doing his thing and someone else messes up. And that's the only time we really see it, and hardly even then, because he just gets out of the car. Who does that? Despite how easy it is to hate this character, I love the artistry that went into building him. So often when the writers want the audience to despise somebody, they either tell in lieu of showing or they just show way too much. That's why you get all of these, you know, dog killer rapist bad guys. It's easy, it's lazy, it's boring, it's gross. I don't need a 10 minute long torture scene to let me know that this guy is bad. You know, it's, it's just, it's overdone and it's stupid. Again, this is my opinion, but I love that Anton Sugar is not that at all. Everything that is shown is shown on purpose and it tells a story, but at the same time, I don't feel like this message is, you know, banged into my head. By the end of it, I can take what I want from it. Fate is a common theme throughout the movie. Uh, morality. If morality wasn't so deeply ingrained in us, you know, societally or biologically or whatever, I feel like there would be way more Antons running around the world. 
It would be a much worse place. Then there's Sheriff Ed Tom Bell. He's having this revelation the entire movie, and he just seems so tired. I think he's disappointed in the world and that nothing shocks him anymore. The lawlessness spreads so fast, and the law, which is him, can't contain it. Tommy Lee Jones was incredible in this movie, just unbeatable performance. And I like to think that he retires and goes on to be Agent K in Men in Black and has to start all over again. <laughs> then we got Carson Wells. Uh, this is my first movie I've seen with Woody Harrelson in it. Hey, we should do something for that. New actor alert! New actor alert! Anyway, so he's hilarious. My first thought about him was Owen Wilson doing a Matthew McConaughey impression. <laughs> One of the funniest parts in this movie is when he's questioning Llewellyn, and Llewellyn's just being this crotchety old man in response. He's just giving him nothing. It's so cute. They, they, they go well together, and they're kind of joking, but he's just... He's not letting him have an inch. <laughs> and I was so sad how Sugar caught up to him. It's so creepy when he meets him on the staircase and he's, he just, he moves his head in this way. It's so freaking creepy, I'll show it. Let's go to your room. Let's, let's go to your room. I can't do it. Oh, it's just so, ah, it's horrible. It's amazing. Um, but I feel like when he mentions the ATM and the 14 grand that's there, I feel like Carson knows what weak leverage that actually is and how he just doesn't stand a chance. But he was brave until his last breath, which of course happened suddenly and without any sort of respect, like most characters who died in this movie. It's just like, they're there and they're awesome one minute and then pfft, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead too. Okay, a couple last things. I like that the relationship between the sheriff and the deputy wasn't just hero and sidekick or like seasoned and stupid. There was this mutual respect kind of thing you go in there. They seemed to know each other well and they could make jokes about the job to each other. It seemed like, you know, they, they had a role in each other's lives that no one else could kind of replace. And I like how just realistic that was. Also, Sugar did not have to go back for Carla Jean. It was completely unnecessary. No one would have known about this promise he made to Llewellyn. And it almost cost him his life in the end. Or maybe it, maybe it even did. Maybe he bleeds out or something. No. He's like a cockroach. He'll never die. And at the same time, in the same tone, Llewellyn didn't have to go back for the thirsty Mexican man. Who was already dead by the time... See, no one would have known. His conscience got the better of him. And yeah, maybe it would have still... I don't know. I think maybe he would have still gotten tracked down. What are you talking about? I don't know. I have to think about that some more. But it's like he, he didn't have to do that. And I feel like it just it made everything worse. But it made a hell of a movie. Um, I know that it's based on a novel. I wish there were more of these. It kind of reminded me of um, a little bit of Fargo, which is it's just kind of the same mood. I guess. I don't know. It's Coen Brothers also. And I just, oh, I love it so much. Anyway, I'm going to sign off with a poem that I wrote. Have you ever seen 10 Things I Hate About You? Well, in the end, the, the main girl, she recites a poem to the boy that she loves. And I made one. I copied it. And I made one about Anton Chigurh. And here it is. I hate the way you shoot people and the weird way that you walk. I hate the way you stay silent, even worse when you start to talk. I hate your plain white normal socks and the choices that you pick. I hate you so much it makes me rhyme, it even makes me sick. I hate your face, it seems so nice, when you're really mean instead. I hate it when you make people scared, even worse when you make them dead. I hate it when you shot that bird and the fact that you're always calm. But mostly I hate the way you cut your hair. No one likes it. Not even your mom. Anyway, I could go on and on and on. You know how I do, but I'm not going to because I just did. Thank you so much for watching. Patrons, I could not do this without you. Amazing movie, y'all. I had fun. Hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye!